We start with the weather as we kick off the Labor Day holiday weekend. Another round of storms move through tonight. Check out this ominous picture here from Elizabeth City sent to us by 13 News Now viewer Rainy Lee Ainge. A similar scene on I-264 West in Virginia Beach this morning. The shot coming to us from Mason Hinckley. And we always like getting the weather pictures and videos from you. Email us at share at 13 newsnowcom And Evan joins me now. And Evan, are we done with the rain? for now for now most places we still have one thunderstorm that's moving through the eastern shore up around Accomack County and mm -hmm. Chincoteague and I think tomorrow we'll see a few isolated showers and storms popping up as we take a look at the radar again quiet for most of us but off towards the north we have a couple of thunderstorms and one big one there just through the northeastern corner of Chincoteague and Accomack County we had of course the heavy rain earlier mainly south side and especially into North Carolina we had some very heavy rain moving through there that has since pretty much come to an end but we are tracking some of that heavy rain still through northeastern corner here of Accomack County we have a flood advisor in effect until 1145 and some of the heavy of the rain right now is just right over the bridge towards Chincoteague and you can see out here out over the water. But there are a couple other thunderstorms that have just popped up within the past half hour or so here through parts of the northern neck and just north of Tangier Island. So can't totally rule out an isolated shower or two in some of our far northern locations and future cast shows that through the overnight. Tomorrow we start the day very much like we did today with partly sunny skies and as that heat and humidity builds into the afternoon I think we will see a couple of isolated showers and thunderstorms popping up once again. So here's sort of your weekend preview. 87 degrees tomorrow, 30% chance of isolated showers and storms, 20% chance on Sunday with a high of 88. And when I come back, we'll track those chances for rain over the weekend and we'll take a look at that Labor Day forecast and the outlook as the kids head back to school on Tuesday. That's in a few minutes. David. Evan, thank you. A shocking arrest in North Carolina. A teenage girl is charged with first degree murder in her mother's death. 30 year old Ashley Dozier Tyler was killed in her Elizabeth City home last week. 13 News Now reporter Robert Boyd has the story. Uh, David, today I spoke with the victim's neighbors. They said they were already shocked to find out this woman was killed inside her own home, but then to find out her own teenage daughter has been charged with the crime. Well, it's left them in disbelief. 30 year old Ashley Dozier Tyler was found dead inside her home on North Road Street back on August 23rd. Oh, it was pretty sad, really sad because we were away on vacation and when we came back, it was the street was a was couple cops over there. And we find out that she was gone. Neighbor Indira McFedders said she never could have imagined the woman's own teenage daughter would be charged with her mother's murder. It's pretty shocking because I had teenagers, I had three teenagers, and I would never think that my kids will do that to me. The teenager, who has not been named by police, was found in Newark, New Jersey, along with her mother's car. She has been charged with first degree murder and larceny of a motor vehicle. Did you ever see any fighting or anything over there between the mom and daughter? No, actually, no, never. Indira says what's most troubling to her is that the suspect rode the school bus with three of her own kids. They never really talked to her, but they, I mean, what they say, she seemed like a, a little handful. <laughs> As for Ashley Dozier Tyler, Indira says she was a nice woman and seemed like a good mom. Just like a regular person, you know, you will never think that something like that will happen to her, you know. She was just, normally she will hang out in the back porch and sometimes my, my little boy, my five-year-old will go and ride the bike and turn around in her backyard. She says many neighbors are still in denial that this sort of thing could happen in Elizabeth City. We still believe in praying that it's not her, you know. 13 News Now reached out to Ashley Dozier Tyler's family, but they declined comment for this story. The teen is expected to be extradited back to North Carolina pending a court appearance in New Jersey on September 6th. Robert Boyd, 13 News Now. Tonight, four men are behind bars accused in connection with the death of a teenager in Norfolk. 15-year-old Monty Hughes was killed on Herbert Collins Way earlier this month. Police arrested Frederick Reed, Ramon Onubi, DeMonte Tyler. All today, Reed and Onubi are charged with murder. Tyler as an accessory after the fact. Another suspect was already in custody. Police charged Naquan Alexander with murder shortly after the shooting. Tonight, the family of an inmate who suffered a medical emergency at the Portsmouth City Jail has died and demanding justice. A recent investigation found some deputies there weren't checking on inmates, including Pamela Riddick, twice an hour like they should have been. New information suggests they went more than two hours without checking on Riddick the night she died. When they did find her, she was in distress and medics rushed her to the hospital, but it was too late. To this date, which would be much more concerning on whether she did it or not, 
No one has come forward to say we screwed up. We messed up. Riddick died from having too much fentanyl and cocaine in her system. The Portsmouth Sheriff's Office tells us the jail was understaffed the day Riddick died, which might be part of the reason why deputies violated procedure. The current sheriff has ordered an investigation into Riddick's death and has made changes to policy, hoping to stop this from happening ever again. Today was the East Coast turn to say goodbye to Senator John McCain. The public got that chance as McCain's body lied in state at the U.S. Capitol. This morning, political leaders gathered for a private ceremony in Washington. They joined the war hero's family, including his 106-year-old mother, Roberta. McCain himself reportedly planned this service and requested President Trump not be invited. Politicians from both parties participated in the ceremonial wreath laying. On behalf of the Senate, and the entire nation, thank you. Thank you for lending him to us longer than we had a right. There's been a vase of flowers sitting on McCain's desk in the Senate chamber in his memory. After this morning's service, McCain's close friend, Senator Lindsey Graham, took his wife, Cindy, McCain's wife that is, to the desk and gave her two white roses from that face. Members of our congressional delegation are also mourning John McCain's death tonight. 13 News Now reporter Chinu Her got the chance to speak with Senator Tim Kaine today. Chinu. We had David in Norfolk today. Senator Tim Kaine sat down with me to talk about his relationship with Senator John McCain ahead of the funeral tomorrow in Washington. Senator Kaine reflected on their time serving together as well as just their time spent as friends. It's no secret both men were on opposite sides of the aisle. Tim Kaine, the Democratic senator who made a run for vice president, and John McCain, the Republican senator who made a run for the presidency. Even those differences didn't keep the two far from each other. We traveled around the world together and worked very, very closely for the last five and a half years, and it, we will really, really miss him. Senator Kane is preparing for Senator McCain's funeral in Washington Saturday, an event that will bring sadness, but also unity. It'll be moving, but I, I expect it's also going to be a real reaffirmation of the values that should bind us together as Americans. Like others around the country, he'll remember Senator McCain as a hero. Not only just a truly courageous American hero, but he also is a guy who is uniquely able to say, hey, I was wrong about that. He helped me learn a little bit of, of the humility. And he'll always remember what he calls a pivotal moment for Senator McCain, casting the deciding vote to kill a bill to repeal and replace Obamacare. What was that pivotal moment like for you to see and how does that describe Senator uh, McCain? Maverick, unpredictable. I knew what he was going to do in my gut. I didn't know because he hadn't told me, but I knew in my gut. Um, and it was a, it was truly an amazing show of leadership. Um, and the president and everybody was trying to talk him out of it, but he said, look, I, you're not going to convince me to take health insurance away from millions of people. Perhaps this picture Senator Kane says he's framing can leave people with more than a thousand words about the friendship these senators shared. But I'm going to put it up in my office just so that I will always remember our friendship and be motivated by his example. Chinu Her, 13 News Now. Memorial services for Senator McCain continue tomorrow at 8.30. There will be a wreath-laying ceremony at the Vietnam War Memorial, followed by a national memorial service and a private ceremony at 10 o'clock. Presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama are expected to attend, along with former Vice President Joe Biden. On Sunday, McCain's family will travel to his final resting place, the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis. There will be a private ceremony at 2 o'clock. New video tonight out of York County where a retired military canine took her final walk today, complete with a proper send-off. We told you about 8 of this evening on 13 News Now. The 13-year-old worked overseas for years in some of the world's most dangerous places, but her health began to decline and Ada's family knew it was time to say goodbye. When she was working, Ada sniffed out two bombs and vehicles and performed hundreds of sweeps with a perfect record.